The people who give presidents their intel briefings rarely speak publicly, but Beth Sanner, the woman who briefs President Trump, just broke her silence at an online event for the intelligence community called New IC, Empowering Women and Engaging Men. Beth serves as the Deputy Director of National Intelligence for Mission Integration. In fact, she is the president's daily briefer. Sanner never names Trump, and it's pretty clear she's talking about problems that predate Trump. But when Sanner starts talking in the present tense about her workplace today, that's the Trump administration. I was just chatting with my amazing assistant, Jackie, and we were talking about stereotypes and how people are stereotyped sometimes and how unfair and how limiting that can be. And I wonder how many of us have been put in a box, characterized by others in ways that maybe because we didn't quite fit the mold of people who came before us. And we're lucky that there are more and more women out here, so there's a mold that looks a little bit more familiar. But there are also many of us who are still seen as maybe different. Um, maybe someone who doesn't look the part. And I've been thinking about that even more in the context of the racial inequality that um, the speakers before me have mentioned. I've been thinking about it with our LGBT community and our colleagues with disabilities, and frankly, anyone, man or woman, who just is a little different. So many of our LGBTQ community still feel barriers to getting the positions that they seek and that they perhaps deserve. I truly believe we must think outside the box about spotting potential, about providing opportunities, about giving support to people who don't fit the previously defined molds. Sandra doesn't come right out and say it, but if you pay attention, it almost seems like she's saying we've got to do better at diversity. We have got to get better with diversity. And keep in mind that Trump has one of the least diverse administrations we've had in years. Mostly men, predominantly white, straight, Christian, non-disabled. I'm pretty sure that I didn't get a couple of assignments or I was pulled back from an assignment that I was supposed to get or I didn't get a promotion. And not because I was failing, but because those in charge gravitated toward people who looked like them. And that's a particular problem when our leadership is not diverse. I've always believed the worst thing leaders can do in any organization is to overlook someone, anyone. We need everyone. At times, it almost seems like Santa is trying to give Trump advice on how to be a manager and a leader. As leaders, you should challenge the views of your subordinates about people's potential. You should set up systems where everyone around the table can ask questions that aren't perceived as an insult or an incursion into someone else's territory, but as a team, you're challenging each other against the biases that we all have. You cannot accept one manager's view of someone. I have found this from experience. Even that manager who is actually really good with a lot of people. This is the case particularly for someone who doesn't look like them. Think about how hard it is to be that person of color, maybe the only or one of the few people of color in the vault, maybe a single mom, maybe someone who speaks English as a second language, maybe someone with a speech impediment or a physical disability or some other disability that might be hidden. Think about how strong these people might be. Think about whether they have a perspective that is different and valuable. Are their skills, their knowledge, their insight readily available to you? Are you asking the right questions? At this moment in history, more than ever, we need to make sure that we are doing everything in our power to open up opportunity for everyone. There are too many people who feel left behind, who feel they can't reach their potential because of who they are and what they look like, not because of what they can do. I think we have to have these honest conversations with each other about those kinds of things, about racial inequality, social justice, me too, thanks for raising that, Debbie. Um, 
this is to me is the time when we have to be able to say things to people that we were afraid of saying before. We have to ask.